why do you think dentists on the whole struggle so much with anxiety, depression, and other mental health issues? I think that as dentists, we are handpicked for our personality traits in dental school. I think that the type of a person that dentistry attracts is someone who is very particular about details, very uh, perfection oriented, very goal oriented, um, very high achievers. And that's not a bad thing. It really isn't. But I think that we are not always encouraged through our training to talk about our mistakes, to talk about our mess ups, to talk about the things that go wrong. We're trained as clinicians. I remember in dental school, you know, everything we were taught was, this is how you do a perfect crown. This is how you do your perfect class two. This is how you do your perfect X, Y, and Z. Every procedure was based on perfection, but there was very little education on what happens when you make a mistake? I, I do agree with you. There is definitely a high rate of depression in our field, unfortunately. I think that COVID and the season that it is um, has brought out a lot of this. And I think that it's about time <laughs> we start talking about it because the problem really historically in our field has been no one's talking about it. Mm -hmm. And I think the longer we go, the worse it gets. And we can't live in this state of anxiety and depression. It's like, I was reading something the other day where they said, it's like keeping your umbrella open all the time because you're worried about the rain, mm. even when it's sunny. And I was just like, yes, we don't want to keep that umbrella open all the time, worried about the rain. But that's what this anxiety and depression feels like. We are worried about something that, isn't happening, hasn't happened, or we haven't forgiven ourselves for something that already has. Does that kind of, is, does that, you know, aim for perfection come from dental school, from, you know, all of the years spent half I think it's, I think it's exacerbated if you have that tendency. Mm -hmm. If you've had unresolved trauma, and that really is I mean, uh, many of us have gone through some kind of trauma prior to even dental school, whether it's your upbringing, your childhood, what you go through, your experiences. Have we dealt with those things? I'm one of them. So I can say this, <laughs> you know, for me, I had childhood trauma. And so that was the catalyst for me to try and achieve and achieve and achieve and achieve and, and be the best and do the best and always perform. And it came from a lot of pressure from home. And not that I'm, you know, in a bad space because of it, but I never dealt with it going into dental school. And so dental school is like a pressure cooker. What you have and what you've experienced, I feel like it makes it bigger. We realize that this bubble that is created in dental school that made us really good technicians isn't applicable in the real world. It's not applicable to our relationships. It's not applicable to our career goals. It's not applicable to our parenting. And I think it wears away at us once we try and apply that perfectionistic idea and this hardwired drive that many of us have into the real world. And that's where I think we feel stuck. Is, is this all at the core, is it, is it driven by fear? Yeah, I do think part of it is, I mean, fear of failure is perfectionism. I mean, that's what perfectionism is. It's, I'm afraid to fail, and I'm afraid to make a mistake, and I'm afraid to let go. I think there's also a fear of the unknown. So I think when it comes to dealing with presence and when it comes to dealing with mindfulness and emotional awareness, it's all about the now. The problem that we have when we're dealing with anxiety is we're afraid of something that hasn't happened. We're not actually where we are. We are somewhere where we're not. We're worried about a business decision that we haven't made. Um, we're worried about the outcome of something that hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. And so I think it takes away from where we are in the present moment, where we can adjust or alter or kind of stay connected with the actual situation that we're experiencing, because then we can actually come up with a better solution when we're, and I don't want to downplay anxiety because it's very real, but the brain and the way our minds work, we're very, we're very, very neuroplastic. We can retrain things 
better than we give ourselves credit for. I think we're, it's convenient to slap a label and say, this is how it is. And if that were the case, we would have no happy people period. And so, and I don't think that exists. I'm a little bit of a romantic when it comes to hope in that I think that it does exist and it, it, it is there and it's within us, but it takes a lot of unlearning. It takes unlearning of that fear of what hasn't happened. And it also takes a growing of presence of where am I right now? What am I doing right now? Who am I helping right now? Asking ourselves these questions to to go back from our mind struggling in the, in the future and bringing it back to now is such a game changer. It's such a game changer because that's what breaks the fear. We start equating ourselves to if we fail, I am not a good dentist. That is how I felt when I I remember messing up my first root canal and it felt like my world ended. And there was, I felt alone. I felt alone. I started going inward. I wasn't thinking about what can I do better next time? Or what did I learn at this point? I mean, I was going, wait a second. I don't think I have good hands. I'm not going to be a successful dentist. And you start creating this story because that's what our mind does. But that fear holds us back. But if we understand it instead of judge it, I think we can change a lot of things. On the whole in the dental community, is it embarrassing? Is there a stigma with, when a dentist comes forward or in, on social or just in their story in general, even with patients or in their community, is it embarrassing or hard for them to admit that they feel anxious or that they're struggling with depression? Um, are there stigmas there? And, and then, you know, also, if, if so, how can we help our dental community be more open and vulnerable and safe? I do think that it is a mirror of what our society is, where we don't celebrate mental wellness, we don't, we don't understand mental illness, we think it's too difficult, and we're too busy, really, as a society, praising resume building um, activities, things that we're achieving, that promotion, that new car, that new X, Y, and Z. And so as a society as a whole, we're already in that direction the goal when you're in dentistry is hey you know what i'm i'm going to i'm going to be this fantastic dentist with great hands i'm going to buy this practice that's going to be this multi-million dollar you know behemoth and i'm going to have the perfect work-life balance spend time at home save up for my family save up for myself and you know what that's going to be my idea of what you know my life is going to be like but the reality of it is it doesn't work that way. When you think of your kids and you think of when they learned something and they learned something new, as parents, the last thing we would really say would be a discouraging statement when they fell off the bike the first time or when they fell, period, when they were learning to walk. Oh, you're never going to walk. Like, we don't talk like that to the people that we care about, but we talk like that to ourselves. And then we talk like that to strangers on social media because they're asking a question and then now it's becoming projection of our own insecurities by putting other people down. People are afraid to speak up. People are afraid to be judged. And yes, some of it comes from within them, but some of it has come within the culture that we as dentists and dental professionals, we've we've stood by and watched that young dentist ask a question and then get slammed by all of these discouraging words and discouraging posts. Oh, you're, you know, well, you're just not doing enough. How is that helpful? How would you speak to your own child if they were struggling with something? If we're supposed to be in a field of healing and a field of making pe- field of making people feel better, we don't do a very good job addressing vulnerability in our community because we still are equating it as weakness. As far as what can we do? Honestly, it just starts from one conversation, one person standing up. I think sometimes we think that it's our job when we are trying to make change, and this comes from experience, to change the world. <laughs> and what I realize is the, the change the world needs starts from just one or two people doing things consistently. Until we do that, 
we're going to see a lot of isolation in our field until we want to be each other's cheerleaders. And I think we deserve to be each other's cheerleaders. Things aren't going to change as fast as we want them to.